All right, let's look at absolute extrema and how to find them. So for absolute extrema, step one is you want to find all your critical numbers, which is done by solving either the derivative equal to zero or the derivative being undefined or where it does not exist. Two, so once you find those, step two, evaluate the function at all critical numbers and the endpoints of the interval. Because sometimes uh, relative ex or absolute extrema, like they can occur, you know, in between the intervals, so like here and here, but sometimes it's the endpoints themselves. So something like that. So the endpoints would yield the absolute highest and the absolute lowest, uh, or the critical numbers might, or you might have a combo. like that, where the critical number here would be the max, absolute max, but the endpoint would give you an absolute min. So you gotta test the critical numbers and the endpoints as well. So once you've done that, once you've evaluate, evaluated them all, then just compare them. The largest answer is the absolute max and the smallest is the absolute min. Okay, example three, locate the absolute extreme. Okay, so step one, find all your critical numbers. So get your derivative, so 3x squared minus 12, set it equal to zero, and find your critical numbers. So x is gonna equal uh, plus and minus two. <clears throat> However, we're only looking for the critical numbers between zero and four. <clears throat> so we only need to worry about x is equal to two. Okay, so that's step one. Step two, evaluate the function at the critical numbers and the endpoints of the interval. So I have three things to evaluate. So f of zero, f of two, and f of four. <clears throat> and you're gonna go back to the original function to do this. So if I plug in the zero and for x, that gives me zero. If I plug in two, that gives me negative 16. And if I plug in the four, I get a positive 16. So out of your answers or your results, which one is the biggest? Well, this one right here, the 16, and then the zero is the smallest. So that's your absolute max and absolute min. So you have an absolute max at 16 uh, when x is 4. So the function value is the, is the absolute max or min. The x value kind of gives you the location. The absolute min. Oops, sorry, it's not the 0, it's the negative 16. Jeez. So absolute min is negative 16 when x is equal to 2. Okay, let's go ahead and try some more. Okay, moving on to part B. Uh, step one, find our critical numbers. So we need to do the uh, same thing as before. Get your derivative using whatever rules apply. So e to the x times sine of x, hey, that's a product rule. So the derivative of e to the x is e to the x times sine plus the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x times e to the x. So set it to zero and solve it. So we can factor off an e to the x. And e to the x is never zero. It's always positive, so that's not gonna give you a solution. It's just the sine x plus cosine of x and figuring out where that equals zero. So you can e you're can you either really good at the unit circle and you know where that happens, uh, where sine and cosine are exact opposites. Uh, if you're not sure about where that is, then swing the cosine over to the right. Divide both sides by cosine. And we end up where 
with tangent is equal to negative 1. So tangent equals negative 1 at two spots, two angles, 3 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. But you only need the answers or the solutions that are going from 0 to pi. So you can toss that sucker out and just look at this one. So this is the only critical number you need to, to compare. So now I'll jump to step two. Plug in the endpoints, so the zero and the pi, as well as your critical number, three pi over four. And we'll just see what happens. So when x is zero, I'll get into there, uh, that makes it zero x is pi, plug it in again, and you get zero. Hmm. So it's okay to have a tie. So obviously these two places are going to, it's either going to be the absolute max or the absolute min, depending on this. And it's okay to have more than one. There can be a tie. All right, so for 3 pi over 4, if you plug that in, you get e to the 3 pi over 4. And then sine of 3 pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. So that is bigger than 0. So this guy is your absolute max. Even though it looks really strange. So absolute max at e to the 3 pi over 4 times root 2 over 2 when x is... 3 pi over 4, and then an absolute min uh, at 0 when x is equal to either 0 or pi. Okay, so there can be two places that yield an absolute max or an absolute min. All right, let's move on to part C. So let's get our derivative. So we got to use the quotient rule. So the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the derivative of the denominator times the top all over the denominator squared. So that's equal to zero. So let's simplify the top out. So if you distribute and combine like terms, we end up with 2 minus 2x squared over x squared plus 1 squared, still setting it at equal to 0. So the denominator does not yield a solution again, because x squared plus 1 is never 0. It's always positive. So that's out. So it's just solving the top. So x is equal to negative 1 and 1. But you're only looking from 0 to 3. So the negative one you can toss out. All right, so now on to testing. Plug in the endpoints and plug in your critical number into the function, the original function, and see what you get. So g of 0 is 0, g of 1 is 1, and g of 3. It's three fifths. Okay, so you have an absolute max at one, that's the biggest, when x is one, and absolute min at zero when x is zero. Okay, so not too bad, it's the same process over and over again. It's just the differences are the derivatives and how you solve for it. Um, but otherwise, like, your process is the same. Okay, part D, let's go ahead and do this one. This one's coming out a little bit different. So we need the derivative. So that's going to be 2x to the negative one-third minus 2 is equal to 0. <clears throat> so now negative exponents, they flip. 
So this is gonna flip underneath the two, and let's change it back into a radical just because. Now this is where you have to remember what makes it a critical number. Critical numbers make the derivative either zero or undefined. So if there's a denominator, like you can't always ignore it. This one we could because it's never the denominator is never gonna equal zero. But on this one, it can. Like there is a number that you can plug in to make it zero. But before you like go, hey, I know what the answer is, hold off for a second. You gotta combine everything all into one fraction and then you can start to solve. <clears throat> Some of you might have been able to solve it in your head already. That's great, but a lot of times that's not easy to do. This one it kind of was. So anyways, just get a common denominator Make it all one fraction and then solve for the top and solve for the bottom and whatever makes them equal to zero. So for the top, it's just one. From the, the denominator, it's just zero. So we ended up with two critical numbers. Now the one, that's also your endpoint and that's okay. Sometimes that happens. You just don't need to test it twice. Okay, so f of negative 1, f of 0, and f of positive 1. Okay, so going back to, again, the original function, uh, plug in the negative 1. So this is what it's going to look like. So now it's like, oh gosh, how do we deal with that? Well, remember the denominator tells you what the radical is and the numerator tells you the exponent. So like if you apply the exponent first, the two, one, negative one squared is one, cube root of one is still one. So the first term is three, plus two would give you five. Okay, now if you plug it in the zero, that knocks out everything, so that's a zero. Plug in the one, one to any power is still one, so it's just three minus two, which is one. So here's your max, here's your min. <clears throat> and I'm gonna write it as a point this time, just because sometimes it's useful to have both formats. So the absolute max is at the point negative one comma five. This is the actual value, the five. The negative one is just the location. And the absolute min, zero comma zero. So on an exam, you know, pay attention to how it's asking you to list it out. It might just want the, the value, but it also might want the point. Um, just, you know, just read your directions. Okay, so that is going to do it for 4.1. So try the homework and let me know if you have questions.